<laughs> Howdy folks and welcome to Coffee and Tools and we're talking about a 3D printer this week and before we start the clip I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I'm so excited about this particular printer. Imagine a printer for a second that has an easy build when you receive it. it has a large volume so it can it can build big things as well as small. It runs like whisper quiet. Imagine that it uh, has a touch screen interactive so that you can you know work the printer while it's running and you can get all your information off the screen. Imagine for a second that power loss or you can pause the printer and then restart. That's a great feature and imagine all that for a great price. Wow that's what excites me. Okay let's start the clip and we're gonna show you the printer. Wow here it comes. Are you ready? Boom! So here it is, just like it says on the box, longer, and it's the LK5 Pro. I can't wait to get this box open. <laughs> I have to get it open quickly. Let's get, let's get this guy out, because this is, a, to me, this is an exciting printer. It, it's one of the bigger uh, consumer market sizes out there. It also, like I said, it goes together they say it's like a five minute build, which was pretty exciting because if it goes together easy, I think already it's a good printer, you know, because I don't want to spend it forever. So first off, we've got some nice, full, it's well packed and it, wow, it really is well packed. Man, it is well packed. She's, there we go. Yeah, we have the uh, instruction manual, got a little coupon to get some printer supplies, uh, discounts if we want them. And it comes with tools. It has some uh, of the silica packing to keep things dry during the packaging. There's also some pieces here to assemble, which I see. Oh yeah, limit switches, and a really <laughs> that's a that's a nice scraper blade right there. But let's get it all laid out and let's see how we do. This uh, sort of comes in two. Pieces. I, well, it's more than two pieces, but it comes in a, a top section here, which is your main upper rail, and then you've got two support rails, and you have the back, what we call the Z. This is for Z. This is the Z right here for going up and down, and this is the Z rod. So we're going to get these pieces out, and then we're going to pull the big part out, and I get this box out of the way so we can have a good look at what all came in here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Oh yes, look at that. That is nice. That looks like, yep, yeah, probably the 2020 uh, extruded. Nice. Now, that was the top, wasn't it? I think it was. Yep. Now this piece comes off the top. Now we get to the to the meat of the matter. And really, like I said, there's not. This one sort of is, uh, you know, not quite fully assembled, but it's pretty close. <laughs> so they tell me. And here's the. Yep, here's the main bar. Let's see, let's get this, okay. So we'll get this out. We're gonna get the big guy out first with the plate. Actually, take this plate off and put it somewhere uh, where it'll be protected because it's a glass plate. It has two different types of textured sides to it, which again is a, another nice feature about this printer. Now we're gonna get the big boy out. Yeah. Okay. And all oh, the feet are already on it too. I thought we'd have to at least assemble the feet. We don't even have to do that. So that part's looking good. Uh, oops. Are we attached? We might be. Yes, we are. Where are we? Okay. So when you get this out of the box, you kind of want to be real careful to lay everything up kind of careful until you get ready to do the assembly. In the assembly, like I said, it's from everything I've heard, the assembly on this machine is not that bad at all. And, uh, I've seen two, three days trying to put a printer together, so this is this should be a joy. <laughs> okay, and we got tools. And yep, the back stepper motor for the Z operation right there. Good. Now the rest of the parts, which bracket for the mounting of the motor and that looks like another bracket but I think we got it all 
I do believe. Wow, they really were serious about packing this thing. Oh my. There's your uh, spool holder for your for the uh, filament that you'll be providing. Oh, this is a nice touchpad control screen that you'll be working with with the printer. And I think I'll go over this careful and just make sure everybody's out of the box. But I do believe that is the whole that the that is the that's all of it. So let's get it aside. It may look just a tad overwhelming when you first get a 3D printer, especially if it's your very first 3D printer, but this will go together really nicely and I think you'll be really surprised at how quickly you can put this together and get working on it and use it right away. This build plate is a 300 by 300 millimeter with a 400 millimeter top, but what does that really mean when you're in the US of A? Those numbers may not mean lots, a lot to you, so let's get a tape measure and I'll tell you exactly what that means. Size is 11.8 inches, this way by this way. Now, total height, this baby can pump up to 15.74 US inches. And, you know, that's, so that's something to keep in mind. This is a good size printer. It's for building, you know, big things kind of thing. But you can also build small stuff. It's, it'll do both. And one of the things I wanted when I went shopping for a printer was something that would do small to fairly large items. So this fits that bill. So let's take a look at everything that we have. We'll lay out all the parts and take a quick look at what, what the total is. Now that we have the parts laid out and we've gone over the pieces, first thing I think I want you to do <laughs> is get this piece of glass. Because this is sort of a hard... You know, this is a nice piece of glass. You've got to find a good safe place to stash this thing until you're ready to use it. Because this is really almost like the last thing that will go on the machine once we get it assembled. So let's, let's go bury this somewhere safe. <laughs> now this is something I just wanted to throw in here. Uh, when this came in it was set for 230 volt which is you know European or most other countries in the world except uh, North America. So, in Belize, yeah, and uh, so you'll want to take a flat screwdriver and just switch that over to 115. Do that before you ever think about connecting cables or doing anything else. Just a little quick safety tip there. Now, let's move on. I cleaned my table off to just the three basic components. The, the main body of the machine here, this upright that'll be going here, and the bar that holds the nozzle and what have you here. So I want you to feel really comfortable about the assembly, so I'm taking my time. It's going to take way longer than it really should because I want you to be really comfortable and you want, I want you to be able to like reference this video when you're assembling or something if you decide to buy this printer. And the first thing I looked at was this cable right here. I don't want this to interfere with this bar, so I'm going to lift the bar just over the top like this. There's wheels on here that self-guide, and you just want to line the wheels up like this, and then slide this up into place so that you have this part of the assembly. So the, uh, the gang over at Longer were nice enough to include tools with this machine so you can put it together. Now this is calling for the M, let's see, they call it the M416 screw for the stepper motor. So you got a little baggie marked with that. We only need two, two of the screws out of there, so we'll take two screws out of the baggie. Okay, we'll take them all out, but we, we'll take two out. <laughs> now, you're going to find these are a nice set because they have a little ball type joint at the bottom of them, so they, they can pivot and swivel a little bit as you tighten up. Of course, you'll have to find the right one that fits those screws, which is that one there. And so we're going to start this stepper motor assembly. and. I usually like to put the screw right through and then lead it up to the hole. Uh, it just sort of makes life a little bit easier. But like I said, you, don't, you just put these in loose at this time. We're not ready to, you know, you're not going to bolt it down tight or anything at this time. We're just going to put the screws loose so the stepper motor is held by the screws at, the, at this point. Is step three, which we go over on the back page here. Okay, and this is the part where we're actually going to put this on top of this and we're going to bolt through. There's bolts that come through the bottom and this has always been kind of awkward on any 3D printer I have ever put together. Loosely find the, yep, find the happy spot, grab the wrench, 
that they supplied and sort of snug that up a little bit just to get it started. Now I've got two started. So I'm going to sort of stand this up a little bit and set this down carefully. And we're going to go to the other side, but when I do that, I'm not going to totally lay the machine over. I'm just going to kind of stand it up on end here a little bit and get these started by hand, which um, I'm going to put this on a bit of an angle. It might help you see it just that much better. You've got these rods, which are going to go from this ear to this ear. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the machine uh, a little bit more. Now we've got all the strut on it. Just so you guys can get a good look at this. This is a Z-Rod amp. I said it, it threads through here and it's going to come down. Now if I hold the Z-Rod so it doesn't turn, okay, and bring it down into the coupling, you'll see it slides, it slides down about almost a half an inch. And then we're going to take the stepper motor and at this point I'm going to walk this up and just clamp it. Again, uh, I'm going to use the word snug, but you can pretty much tell when you've got it because it's, you know, it's not going to move around. And I would check the bottom one and just see how tight it is, you know, and just make sure like, yeah, well, that's really tight. And again, this one here, same thing. You want it really tight because it is going to be under workload at all times. So just, yeah, like that, just make sure it's really snug. Now that's a Z-Rod. So it's a step that... It's actually uh, back here in uh, sort of, you know, in back in here in number, yeah, number two step. But I decided to leave it until I could shoot it with the film a little bit better for you. Because it's not, again, this is not, not a scary assembly. And look how fast we're going through this. We've done number three. We just put the bars on for number four. And now we're going to move over to number five, which is going to be the top of that bracket that actually supports the Z-Rod here. So this is the top of the Z-Rod, and this is the bracket that we're going to be putting on up there. And we'll get that out of our packaging. And here's what it looks like. There it is there. And there's two holes pre-drilled up here that this is actually going to go onto. It's got a little bearing, and it's going to help support the Z-Rod right here when it's, when it's, once it's assembled here. So this is really sort of the last assembly part, and I'm just going to turn this again so you guys can get a good look at the situation here. <clears throat> get the cable out of, out of the way here. Yeah. Uh, right here is a sticker, and what this is is the limit switch location, which is this strange looking packaging with one screw and one what we call T-nut in there. And the limit switch is going to have to be located like this. So that assembly comes down and it'll trip that limit switch to tell the machine that this assembly has reached the bottom here. Again, a no-brainer, but you know, it's it's good to, it's good stuff to know. So I put the T-nut there, and you see the paper actually kind of stopped it from going any further down. So that's cool. And now what I'm gonna do is put the put the screw through and go find the T-nut like that. And don't be too scared of it. The T-nut is going to, uh, just by virtue of resistance or friction, is going to uh, slowly lock up when it hits the aluminum as it turns. Now, right now, I'm right about where the line for the paper is, but I'm going to bring it right down close to the, yep, so the black line is right at the limit switch on this marking, on this paper here. And now I'm going to just turn and make it snug. Again, not real tight because you just want it snug enough that you know it's going to hit this limit switch and so I would never, when you first open this, don't ever take that sticker off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do that. Okay, due to time constraints I'm going to go through this quickly. I've just put two bolts here that hold this on for your display. Also, put the bracket back here, two, bolts, two, two small screws that were supplied with the kit. I've already put my filament on and fed it into my extruder, which will be feeding through a Bowden tube down here to the nozzle. The uh, wiring is all well marked, so, you know, like the X motor here, uh, you also have an extruder motor there, so you look for E or, or X for the uh, motor here, also the X for the limit switch here, the Z, which uh, we talked about a little bit earlier. The Z limit switch again there. 
this goes together like I said it's a no-brainer and of course at some point don't forget to put the plug in the back of the machine so we can plug it into the wall and run the machine there basically at that point if you have been following this you should have a complete you should have the longer k5 pro machine all put together and ready to rock and roll uh, last night uh, we got her together we uh, ran her ran a couple of quick tests off and uh, pretty impressed a very impressive machine and like I said for the price I haven't seen a better deal than this one for the features and the price this is really a good machine all the way around uh, either a starter or to bump up to a bigger machine from you know something else you've already had really love it so let's let's let me show you what I've been doing and right now we're, we're only at 53 percent uh, completed on the uh, what I call the benchy which is the boat this really tests 3d printers for you know what what they can or cannot do wow what I'm printing here is of course we regard it as benchy but this is the boat from LK5 Pro or longer on the LK5 Pro model. We're under harsh conditions here because I'm outside the garage with the air blowing around from outside. We have a cold front that just came in and so I'm really sort of stressing this machine I guess you could say in some ways but it looks like the boat is coming out embarrassingly good. Way better than any of my other 3D printers even can do with the Benchy. Yep, there she be. And she's bringing it forward to deliver. Now, the plate is hot right now and it's usually pretty hard to get them off the plate when they're... Okay, job is finished. Yeah, the uh, Benchy, or the little boat, came out looking really, really good. The lines look good. There is some very, very tiny flaws but overall that is amazing i really didn't expect the boat to come out actually looking that good very first time out like that so i'm almost embarrassed to say that's better than any of the 3d printers i've ever owned <laughs> that looks good so you can even read the back of it here so <laughs> what an awesome little little job oh the good old benchy due to a time constraint we're gonna stop and just call this part one at this point because we spent a lot of time with the assembly obviously and just talking with the assembly about the features because it is a really, this is quite a marvelous machine and there's still a lot of information I'd love to share with you guys. So uh, we're gonna stop this and we're gonna do a part two next week where we'll come back and really get into the touchpad screen, some of the features and more of the nuts and bolts of this machine. It has embarrassingly made a some tests already that have superseded some of my uh, high-end expensive 3d printers this guy's doing a really great job in the description below there will be a link to where you can purchase this machine at a discount price that's important because it not only helps uh, provides me a little bit helps to support our channel here but it'll also give you guys a great price for a great printer and if you're thinking about buying one or you think about getting a bigger one or something like that yeah this this is a great deal this is a really nice printer and it's a great deal next week we'll be talking about the features and more of the nut and bolt side of the printer and also talking about the different types of plastics the pla the abs and the asa all the other plastics pet g and all that that you can run yes you heard me right that you can run with this printer and again thank you for watching coffee and tools and please like share and subscribe and have a great day you guys and adios i'm out of here